Page 43, Sombrero Silhouette. I'm surprised I was able to pronounce those words. Alright, let's move on. I want to talk about page 42. Creating new melodies with chord tones. Remember chord tones are the notes in a chord? The tones in a chord? Blah. Step one at the top. They're giving you a C. See the C above the staff? That's the chord. If a guitar player or somebody who improvises could, was playing along, they would read that and then they would play the improvised stuff on that chord. Chord tones. Well, the notes written are here. So when you give the C the chord up above, you can add the left hand even though it's not there. And that's where the the equals and the other, they're showing you that, this. What they're not showing you is that you don't have to play block chords. You can do all kinds of stuff in the left hand using those chords, chord tones. Now, step two, they're using these chords in the right hand, in this C chord, to make melodies by playing these notes in various patterns and rhythms. You can create melodies that way. So it's like this in, in step two. They added a blues note. That's a blues note because the blues. I'm not swinging the eighth notes right now, but that's sort of what it would be. I mean, you could swing the eighth notes if you wanted to. Type thing, that's fine too. Keep in mind you don't have to play block chords in the left hand. You can play whatever, just play this chord. The notes you play need to be belong to this chord or something. Close. But you can play different patterns. Play a single note if you don't want to. It doesn't matter. Step three. Now they're going to use repetition to improvise. We've already had this. This is old school to us. But in the example, look at the example. It's here. It's The motif is the first measure. Then to improvise, they're going to repeat that. Then improvise again, they're going to repeat it again, but they're going to go up an octave. And then the ending. Remember, you got to end on the, the note of the chord, the C, in this case. We're in C, so you got to end on a C. It's got to be, it doesn't have to be this C or this C, but it's got to be some C somewhere. C? See what I mean? Oh. And then the second line on step three. The motif is this. So to improvise on the blank, the first blank measure, repeat it exactly. Then in the next blank measure, they want you to repeat it again, but go up an octave, so up here. And then the ending. Some ending. Make up your own ending, just make sure the last note you play is a C. And that's step three. Now step four, we're going to use retrograde. Retrograde, remember, is playing it backwards. So the first measure in the example is the motif. Now for this purpose of this, I'm going to play the eighth notes evenly because it's a little easier to understand what's going on. So it's here. Then the next measure is the, that motif played backwards. So if you take the first measure and read the notes going backwards, you'll see there's a quarter note E, and then there's four eighth notes. You got a C, E, G, E, and then a quarter note E. And that's what that is in the second measure, is those notes backwards, it's there. Then in the third measure, it's that retrograde again, but this time an octave higher. So let's try that out on the bottom here and see what happens. The motif is the first measure. So the first one's tied. One and two and three and four. If it's confusing you, take out the tie and play all the notes. But put the tie back in when you get it. One and two. Then the retrograde is to do that backwards. Well, carefully figure out. You have a quarter note E, and then you have three eighth notes, a, a G, E, G, and then a C, which is going to be an eighth note tied to a quarter note, 
because it's backwards. So that's what it is. One and two and three and four and. Weird, huh? Then the third measure, you're going to do that retrograde an octave higher, just what you just did, and then the ending. And that's improvising. They give you an acoustic jamming at the bottom. I'm going to skip that for now because I want to get over here to this other thing. You're going to use these improvising techniques in this sombrero thingamajigger they got going on here. So we're going to try that out. There's not a lot to point out here. Watch the accents. They're on beats two and four. Try and put them in if you can. Melody's in the top line, but it's the last line that I'm getting at. This is the improv section. This is where you just repeat any number of times. They're saying play it three times. Because you see the two endings. The first one is a one comma two. That's first and second ending combined. That means you're going to play it twice. And then the third time you skip that and go to the third ending, that's what that's for. So you can improvise different things or if you're playing in an ensemble you just keep doing it until everybody was done improvising and then you could go on. When we do the play with me, now when we get down to the last line down there on that, they have a, look at the endings, you have a one comma two for the first and second ending and then the third ending is a three. They want you to play that last line basically three times. And that's fine, but when we play it together, where well, I'm only going to do this twice. So I'm going to take the first ending, then I'm going to repeat it, and then I'm going to go to the third ending. It says go up to two and then fine. Well, they mean measure two. If you look at the first line, you see the two with the box around it. That's measured. That's measure number. That's measure two. Go up to measure two, and then the fine is at the end of the third line. When we do the play with me, I'm going to give you the two counts for the two beat rests at the beginning. So I'm just going to go one and go. I'm going to go ready, go, and those are those first two beats in that first measure. So it's ready and go and three. And start right in there. That, that should work, I think. Now I want to swing the eighth notes. But if that's causing problems for you, play them even for a while until you get the hang of this. The other thing I need to point out is the first two beats of this piece are rests. Actually, what it is, it's a, it's a pickup measure, but they didn't do it as a pickup measure. They, they did a whole measure because it messes things up later in the piece if they do a pickup measure. So what they've done is it goes ready and go and one and two and three. So you're coming in on beat three. Work these things out one hand at a time until you get it. I just don't know that I need to point out the rhythms all these. You do the one and two and. Start on measure two. One and two and three and. It's tied. If that's confusing you, take out the tie. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And then when you can get that, put that tie back in. You think playing the second note, you're just hanging on to the first. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. It's the syncopation that'll get you. Let's try this out slowly. I'm going to give us four counts, a full four, and then you're going to have to rest two more beats before you come in, before we come in. So put your hands where they go, left hands here. Right hand is here. Mm, that's interesting. All right. Ready and go and three.
four and a root, two and three and four and repeat. I'd like to do this acoustic jamming thing at the bottom with you. So I'm going to play that and you play what you just played and again that bottom line I'm just going to do twice so you can do all that yourself. Now this first measure you get by yourself. I don't come in until measure two. So this bit you're on your own on that one. So I'm going to go ready go like that and then we start. So go ahead and put your hands where they go. Ready, go, and three, and four, and... <laughs> 